Do you want to start making animations? Well, then you have to pay attention here because I'm going to teach you all the basics you need to make animations in Pivot Animator. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything from just moving figures around to hotkeys you will only find if you read the whole manual. Yeah, I actually did that and I don't quite know why. I will also discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages with Pivot Animations so you can know if Pivot is the right software for you, as well as a ton of other stuff. It's timestamps in the description, but I would recommend watching in chronological order, seeing as that is the way the tutorial is recommended. And this is part one, where I'm gonna teach you everything you need to do the basics in Pivot animations, and become a racer at animating, without any experience. But why should you use Pivot animations? It's a program where instead of drawing every single frame by hand, you can move pivot points, which makes making a, an animation pretty fast and easy. So pivot is perfect for you who don't have a drawing tablet, or if you is experiencing that your segments are getting smaller and larger during the animation. However, that's also one of Pivot's biggest weaknesses, because even though there are some tricks to change the sizing and length of your figure, which I'll obviously show you later, it's hard to get your figure from different angles. But if you don't own an expensive drawing tablet, or just want to make animations fast, Pivot is perfect for you. And even though I've been pretty critical to Pivot, it's extremely many amazing animations that's made in the software. So even if you have a drawing tablet, I would recommend trying it out. So this is Pivot's default menu, and it can be split into four parts. In this video, I'll teach you all you need to do in the three first parts, and then I'll go into detail on the fourth part in part two of this mini tutorial series. So, the first part of Pivot Animation's window is where the main animating happens. To remove the figure, you have to hold the mouse pointer and drag the orange dots. And if you want to change the rotation or angle of one of the segments, you have to hold the mouse pointer over one of the red dots and move it. And when you move one of the pivot points, the segment will never become longer or shorter. However, there is one way to get around this, and that is by holding control and dragging the pivot points. Because then the segment perfectly follows the mouse pointer. It's also a couple of other extremely useful hotkeys that you need to know about. The first one is that you can use the arrow keys to move the figure one pixel. The second is that you can hold control C to undo a change, and similarly, you can also hold Ctrl Y to redo the change. And you could, you could also press Alt and drag one of the pivot points to both rotate and change the sizing of the figure. But what if you don't want to change the sizing of a figure when you're rotating it? Or you want to change the sizing but not rotate it? Well, that's where the second part of Pivot's menu come in. Let's start at the top. When the play button is pressed, the animation starts playing, and it could be stopped by pressing the stop button. And here I'm playing an animation I made from before, however I'm obviously going to show you how you can make your own as well. And also, you can see that the, both the P and the S is marked in the play and stop buttons, small line underneath. That means you can press P and S as hotkeys to start and stop the animation. However, if your language isn't English, it might be that there are other letters that's marked. And then they are the hotkeys to start and stop the animation. And in part 2, I'll also show you how you can change your language, if that's something you want. Uh, this checkbox underneath here, if this is crossed off, the animation will loop. As that means when the, it's done playing, it will start over again. Uh, this slider over here controls how many frames per second plays. If it's lower, fewer frames will be played per second. So that means it will be less job animating. However, the animation would also be more choppy if 
if it's higher the animation will be smoother but it will be way more work to animate per second therefore i would recommend finding a good balance for what you are animating and i personally like to animate at about 12 frames a second underneath is the background and add figure buttons uh, and you can press add figure now uh, to add the default stick figure in the animations. However, I'll skip these for now because in part two of the tutorial, I'll show you how you can add costume backgrounds, figures, as well as sprite and or pictures. Uh, but as you can see, also B and F is marked with a line underneath. And that means they are the hotkeys to adding figures and changing the background. And it's also from other hotkeys that you need to know about when you're editing a figure. The first is that if you press Ctrl and the left or right arrow key, you swap what figure is marked. But that's also the same as using the scroll wheel. And if you want to edit several figures at once, you could e even press Ctrl Shift and the figure to mark several. Or you could drag with the mouse pointer and mark all the figures with this box. Or another possibility is if you want to mark all the figures in a frame is to press Ctrl A. And this is for example useful if you want to move all the figures just as much. And this box here is to modify the selected figures. This slider here controls their opticality. Uh, so, for example, if it's at zero, you can't see the figure. However, if it's at a hundred, you can see it. And it's, for example, useful to change if you want to make a screen flash. And this button over here is useful if you want to change the sizing of the figure. By default, it's a hundred. But if you, for example, press all to rotate the figure, then you can use this to change it back to what it was by even changing the number value or pressing one of the, the arrows here. Uh, these nine icons here also have a function. The first one delete the figure that's marked, but you could also press the delete key. The second open up a wi editing window where you can edit and customize figures. And in part two of the tutorial, I'll go in depth on how you can create co custom figures. So I'm gonna skip it for the moment. The third moves the figure to the center of the screen. And for the fourth, I need to change some of the segments in the figure because it flipped the figure by 180 degrees. And number five, move the figure to the top layer. So it's above all other figures in the animation. And oppositely, the next icon move the figure to the back layer. And if you just want to move the figure uh, up or down one layer, you could hold control and press even the fifth or the sixth button. And as you can see, uh, a couple of the figures have different colors. And I did that to show uh, which figure were on top of each other. And I changed it with the help of the seventh icon, which changes the color of the figure. When it's pressed a pop, color selector shows up uh, with several predetermined color however by pressing here you could also uh, make your own costume colors even a by changing the uh, number values for an rgb code or you could move the mouse pointer and picking one the slider over here on the sides adjust the brightness and when you're done you could e either click OK to add it to the selected figure or you could add it as a custom color there that way you could easily change your other figures to the same color later as well button number eight duplicate the marked figure and the last button is used to chain several figures to each other that way they're always joined to each other and follows after each other that's for example useful if you want several figures to be chained together. If you want two figures to be joined together, you need to have one of them marked and click the join icon. And then you need to press the other figure. And if you want to unjoin them, you just have to mark the first figure again 
and uh, press the ninth button. Uh, this uh, last button in, in the second group is to make new frames. Uh, and you could either use the mouse pointer and pressing it, or you could cl uh, click A, or whatever letter is marked for you. And when you create new frames, they show up up here. And that's the third part of Pivot's default menu. And you have all your frames here. All the way on the left over here, it's a bit of information. And you can edit some of the frames. Uh, on the top, it says what frame you're on. And underneath, it says how many times the frame repeats during the animation. So for example, if you want a frame to last twice as long as the other frames in the animation, you could change this number to two. The X deletes the frame. However, you could also press the delete key. But be aware, you cannot press Control C to undo it. And the icon underneath copies the chosen frame and the button underneath there again pastes it at the end of the animation. However, these three buttons only work if you have a marked frame. And you do that by clicking on the frames in the storyboard over here. And you could also mark several frames during the animation in the same way you mark several figures by holding Control shift and pressing the frames. That way you can both delete and copy several frames at a time. You could also get up to the same menu by right clicking one of the frames in the storyboard. There is also a couple of hotkeys that you must know about. If you press period, you move one frame forward. And if you press the comma key, you move one frame backwards. That was all for this tutorial. And now you know the basics and can create simple to animations in Pivot Animator. Make sure to subscribe because in part two, I'll go more in depth and teach you how you can create custom figures, upload sprites and backgrounds, as well as customizing onion skins and ton of other stuff. Goodbye.